Welcome back, you're watching BBC News with me, Sophie Long. A summary of our headlines for you now as it just approaches a half past four. First, though, more on the news that health professionals in the NHS who deliberately mistreat or neglect their patients will face prison under the new proposals announced by the government. Willful neglect is to be made a criminal offence. Dr Helen Stokes, Lampard, Treasurer of the Royal College of General Practitioners, welcomed the decision but warned that any change must not risk what is successful about the NHS. Well, the move comes after a number of high-profile care failings. Julie Bailey is founder of the Cure the NHS, a patient campaign group formed to highlight the poor care at Stafford Hospital. She set up the group soon after her mother Bella's death at hospital in November of 2007. She believes that the proposals were an important step in improving services. Well, the Shadow Health Secretary, Andy Burnham, said his party supported the implementation of the proposals, but they had to be carefully put into place. Andy Burnham there. Well, a little earlier, we also heard from the uh, Health Minister, Lord Howe. Well, apologies, uh, that was the wrong report. We'll be bringing you more on uh, the situation in Surrey, where a body was found in a well a little later. First, though, Sri Lanka has rejected David Cameron's calls for an independent investigation into alleged war crimes during the country's civil war. The British Prime Minister has been in Colombo for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. David Cameron says he'll go to the United Nations if Sri Lanka refuses to agree. David Cameron, well, the Sri Lankan president, Mahinda Rajapaksa, gave his reaction to the UK's calls for an independent inquiry into alleged war crimes. Now, the people of Chile will vote for a new president tomorrow. The elections come exactly 40 years after the military coup which brought General Pinochet to power. Now, as much as Chile wants to move on and forget the horrors of that era, the shadow of those times is ever-present, even among the presidential candidates themselves. From Chile, Sue Lloyd Roberts reports. Now, for centuries, the hills of Dartmoor have had a rather unusual feature. Thousands of ponies roaming the land. But that could now be coming to an end. A collapsing market means that things are changing for the animals and for the farmers who have relied on them. Sarah Ransom has been finding out more. To £1 million for charities around the UK. A host of celebrities appeared during the six-hour fundraising event. Lisa Mazimba reports. Headlines coming up for you in a few moments' time. First, though, the weather, that's with Helen Willits. Hello, welcome back. You're watching BBC News with me, Sophie Long. A summary of our main stories being out at half past five. Time now for some sports news and for a full round up from the BBC Sports Centre. Here's John. Tomorrow, the elections come exactly 40 years after the military coup which brought General Pinochet to power. As Sue Lloyd Roberts reports, the shadow of those times is ever present, even among the presidential candidates themselves. Thousands of people have turned San Francisco into Gotham City to fulfil one little boy's dream to become a superhero. Five-year-old Miles Scott has been battling leukaemia for three years. But on Friday, all that was forgotten as he became Batman, or in his case, Bat-Kid. Laura Westbrook reports. This is BBC News. I'm Sophie Long. The headlines at six. Also in the next hour, seven people are arrested after a body is discovered at the bottom of a well in Surrey. Hello, good evening. Welcome to BBC News. The Sri Lankan president has dismissed David Cameron's calls for an independent investigation into alleged war crimes carried out at the end of the country's civil war. Mahinda Rajapaska made it clear he will resist pressure to hold an inquiry. Mr Cameron said if Sri Lanka refuses, he'll push the UN to conduct its own investigation. James Robbins reports now from Colombo. ...of the British Medical Association. I asked him whether he agreed with the proposals. The, the full uh, extent of the government's plans, but let's just focus on this one today because willful neglect is what they're talking about, and willful neglect that causes serious harm, that, that should be a criminal offence, shouldn't it? And something needs to change to prevent that from happening again. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to our world affairs correspondent, Mike Waldridge, about the information released by the Foreign Office today. The human remains at the bottom of a well in the garden of a house in Surrey. The police have appealed for help identifying the body. Richard Slee has the latest from the house in Wallingham. Now, this week sees the 30th anniversary of the start of online banking in the UK, although few people knew about it back then. Over the years, the technology's got faster, smaller and smarter. But what does the future hold? Our correspondent, Dave Lee, has been investigating.
Now the Iraqi government is turning to the UK for assistance. In particular, the ideas of one teacher who for the last three years has been swapping his classroom in Berkshire for one in Baghdad. And a collapsing market means that things are changing for the animals and for the farmers who've relied on them. Sarah Ransom has been finding out more. Now, BBC Children in Need has raised more than £31 million for charities around the UK, a record-breaking total. A host of celebrities appeared during the six-hour fundraising event, as Lisa Mazimba reports. Hello, welcome back. You're watching BBC News with me, Sophie Long. A summary of our main headlines now is it's just approaching a half-past six. First, though, it's time to cross to the BBC Sports Centre for Sports Day.